episode 99 i think kind of a fitting episode considering we had you know maybe the the biggest tweet we ever had related to the apple tv stuff in the pregame and everything and you know with bwp being 99 i feel like it's only right to get right into the convo of uh uh, things have been loud, I think, from all the NYCFC community that it just feels like Apple TV, I guess, aside from Kaylin Kyle aside, has no love for NYCFC in, in any capacity. Nah, I mean, we should be used to this, though, honestly. We should be used to this. We've never been respected, even in the year that we won the chip, the year after that. We've never been respected. I mean, even during... You yeah. Know, it's the COVID Cup. Yeah, it, there's always the something. Break. Um, you know... And this this conversation I really wanted to have back when Tati scored four, which I don't know how we, we recorded. I don't think we did. We had to have. Didn't that happen? Did that happen this midweek? That right? might have been right after our last episode, but before this one. Actually. Yeah, like I think yeah, we haven't had an episode since Tati. Oh, four. that's crazy. Yeah, so that really highlighted a, to me how fake MLS people are. Yeah. Like, outside of NYCFC. Mm -hmm. Like, how really fake you weirdos are. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Like, what? I, literally watching ESPN and all these uh, MLS elites tweet about Tati and how, oh, how great it is. And we always knew this would happen. And, dude, you guys were writing him off when he was in New York. You guys were constantly writing the team off. You never treated us like we had a special player in the building mm -hmm. that wasn't named Maxi. Yep. It was like bizarre really really a, like a different universe to see these people congratulating him and being like i knew all along and like people that might typically talk down about the mls uh you know even more so like americans that you know typically they support like i don't know i think they call them like euro snobs or whatever but to like typically not support the mls but then you claim their victories when when things like tati scoring four against real madrid which you know, I don't think it's happened. I guess they, what, what's his name did it? Uh, Louis did it in 2013. Right. And then before that, it was like 1947. Um, so, you know, claiming the victories when 99% the other time you're going to like cry that there's no right. pro rally or, you know, whatever it is, it's just, you know, it's kind of silly. It, But I think it, it was kind of insane to see like our boy like literally plastered over the entire world like we had like our it was like chat. a day yeah it was like a whole day i mean even jack harrison with the assist after was like it felt like nycfc was really on the map mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean it was it was really weird it was cool it was fun but yeah it highlighted a lot of dudes that like you are weird you are a clout chaser like there's no other way to put it you're you're chasing clout um off the back of tati and the entire time that Tati was in the MLS, I feel like there was somebody else that somebody was talking about all the time mm -hmm. and never giving Tati his shine. Yeah. Never giving him, like, credit for being Golden Boot winner. None of that. Like, they were just like, oh, he's, you know, he's in this great team, so, you know, of course he's going to be the Golden Boot winner. Well, I think it, too, it was when, um, I remember we were voting for MLS uh, MVP at the end of the championship season when Tati had his Golden Boot, and they released... Uh, all the votes of like percentage that people get and i think tati got one vote one vote as a the golden, golden boot, boot winner. winner like i don't know that has probably never happened like i would be shocked if any golden boot winner had you know and champion less than 10 or 20 i don't know at that time had we won i think because that was the season that we won right but it's like i think it's a regular season oh yeah yeah, yeah. So we like, hadn't won yet. but he had scored i think in atlanta yeah he had, he had scored, scored in both playoff games that had happened so far yeah and because we were having the conversations I mean, about, good. I'm happy that they didn't give him MVP crazy. because he, that probably gave him motivation to go on and score more. I made the joke to you that they probably brought his mom out to that game, mm. and that's why he bugged out. That's how Real it goes. Madrid. Yeah, whenever, whenever like his brother or his mom's in attendance, Dude. he's just like a different animal. And I mean, uh, we were there in person when he scored the four against DC. I mean, two of them were pens, but I mean, it's still scoring or not DC. It was. Salt Lake. Salt, Salt Lake, Lake, yeah. Because yeah. they said all Real teams yeah. are just on notice. Like, if Tati <laughs> plays you, it's going to be a mess. Um, but it's funny in that, you know, the same pregame Apple TV broadcast where they're bigging up NYCFC and talking about uh, kind of the spotlight he puts on the league. You have, you know, BWP going, I mean, really disrespect the jersey. I kind of see it both ways where it's like, you know, it is a little bit of punditry and like making good TV, but... I don't know. Let, letting it hit the ground, letting the crest hit the ground is a little crazy to me. That's a little a little crazy to me. Like, what do you yeah, think about it? I, I, at, the, at the same time, I'm not catching a Red Bulls jersey. Unless, like, 
Right. I'm I'm probably I'm, doing worse to the Red Bulls. I'm jersey. in the like bro, we we haven't had toilet paper for 3 days <laughs> and I'm in there in the trenches like <laughs> and you toss me a Red Bulls jersey, I'm catching that. Yeah. But only cuz of what's to come. Yeah. Yeah. No, the the funniest one was uh he was avoiding the jersey like he avoided trophies. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I think somebody um Somebody photoshopped it with the MLS Cup trophy, like That's somebody crazy. tossing him that, uh, and him obviously, you know, dropping that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's funny. I think I think we need more representation for NYCFC up there. That's something every NYCFC media publication has been dying on. You know, you got to get a Joe Tollison or an Ian Joy on the payroll because um, we can't have we can't have Sasha and BWP up there every NYCFC pregame like that. Yeah, or just anybody that actually watches us week in and week out. It just feels like every game you're hearing some nonsense that is so far from reality mm-hmm. um, that it catches you off guard and you're like, what What did I actually just hear? Like, are you? do you actually have a job in MLS? Do you actually watch these games? Because um, me personally, if, if I'm employed by Apple TV, I'm watching every game that's my job i'm gonna watch every game yep. i'm gonna know what's going on and these people just don't and it's it, probably gonna get if, if we thought clips were bad this week oh uh, next week's the derby so i mean it's a whole it's probably gonna be a whole different thing next week they should have a call in like i, I would call <laughs> in every week and just be like, you guys are stupid like what are you talking about yeah um but i think you know talking more about the game um yeah, i think the off the field stuff really kind of saved us from uh, thinking about too much about the on the field stuff because yeah. the on the field is so so bland and, and honestly disappointing well and it's like it's it's almost like a rivalry in a different way i think you know we've had conversations about teams that we have kind of the rivalry feeling towards and toronto is definitely one of those especially with sean going up there and i just you know this this in my opinion was like the worst game for us to drop the ball on out of all of them that we dropped the ball on so far this season um, you know, especially against Sean, I think, you know, there were a lot of emotional feelings coming into this. Uh, I think probably from some of the players, um, some of the players didn't know Sean, but, you know, definitely from a lot of the fans, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't refresh Twitter this week without seeing coach Joe with the snake emoji snake emojis. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that, that was the, you know, the topic of discussion. I just, I think more than anything, I hate that we let that man, uh, keep a clean sheet at home. I just, and we didn't even, and beyond that, like. Honestly, there wasn't an attempt or a shot that even tested him. No. There wasn't. Which, honestly, with his track record, is would have been a goal. Right. Realistically. I yeah. mean, he, he's <laughs> kind of just let that thing open. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I really wanted us to make a statement. Um, it was really funny to me to see, like, when I'm watching Toronto, when it's not against us it's fun to watch and the italians running around is exciting every time one of those italian dudes were on the ball i was like the biggest (laughs) hater you could imagine like i was like dude get these guys out of the league like what are they what are they doing um but yeah just anything more than what we got even a draw um even like you said testing sean at all it was just it was embarrassing um totally flat-footed seem unprepared unjointed uh disjointed just completely lacking any chemistry at all i think somebody tweeted we forgot the chemistry in new york and uh, yeah. i hope somebody goes and gets it i think it was the city boys they might have been city they boys. were spot on and like i don't know i almost feel like we should have we should have seen it from from the onset from the lineup um obviously last week to us our best player you know even though you have santi go and and score the two goals and everything in the debut nine i think a lot of people were calling out GP as being the best player on the field, regardless of that. Um, and I think that probably should have been something that we put a lot more weight on, uh, the fact that he wasn't in the lineup for this game. Um, and then you have the the random shuffling of Kufre and Kevin O'Toole. I'm not, I don't really know where that comes from. Yeah. I think, you know, we, we gave, we sat here and we glazed Cushing for half an know, hour last and week. I, as so, soon as I saw that and then <laughs> and then the final whistle blew, I was like, bro, we just we just bigged you up. Like literally we just did it. So I think it's only right. We we do have we have oh. to we have to give him his flowers, but we have to let him roll with the punches That's too. An and L. that was just not a decision that needed to be made. Um I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if he thought 
Kufre needed rest or if he thinks that Kevin O'Toole is more defensive than Here's him. one thing, though. There was a lot of Kufre out talk for a couple of weeks. Hmm. And then all of a sudden when it happened, people were like kind of hiding behind the result yeah. to be like, why did that happen? Well, I think after after the revs, I know I definitely came on here and we had a conversation uh, where we were opposed um, that I kind of felt like Kufre wasn't everything that I thought he was. Uh, but I think he immediately kind of proved me wrong, especially these last couple games. So I'm not sure how that conversation could have continued, but I guess it just doesn't make sense. And, and even still, if you think... Kevin O'Toole is more defensive, uh, you know, more defensive minded than Kufre or can get it done better. Um, it sucks to then have the only goal that they score come on Kevin O'Toole losing. Uh, what's his, I can't even remember his name um, on the the ball that was crossed into Sapong. Uh, and you know, there's there's probably a number of different people that we could we could try to tag that on. You know, I think we would have loved I if Tales came back uh, and helped a little. And then on top of that. You know, we, we're texting each other because we're not seeing the game together. Um, and you're like, where are the center backs? Literally. Where? I, if you circled them on, on the freeze frame of when the goal is being kicked in, mm-hmm. like, where are they? They're nowhere to be found. Yeah. Kevin O'Toole's beat. And then I... Sands could have probably filled that hole if the Sands center backs... tried to, but... Yeah, it, but, you know, he's not him. Superman. He can't he can't cover, you know, every blade of grass. I mean, I thought it was a sand. I honestly thought it was a Sands own goal when I saw it in real time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, with that thing blown by, I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. And then at that point, um, you know, it kind of just unraveled into normally when we go down or it's second half or whatever, there, there's a different team that shows up. It's a different energy and you feel like, you know, at the very least they're giving it their all, mm-hmm. um, to go and get a result. It didn't really feel like that for the first time. No. Um, it seemed like dudes were tired. It seemed like dudes were upset with each other clearly um there's the the biggest moment for us which it the new statue of liberty somebody (laughs) said (laughs) when when you lose one nil and and you really put up nothing um things like this are going to be the only thing that you give on the field to talk about Mm -hmm. um chano and and talas obviously apparently at this point is squashed um how true that is i don't really know as what else is Cushing gonna say yeah what are you gonna say they were fighting all night like (laughs) (laughs) probably not um do i I don't know. I we we kind of disagree maybe a little bit on on um, how this would have been done. I personally like putting you on blast um, in front of as many people as possible, putting mm-hmm. you on high alert that like, no, nah, that is not acceptable. You cannot act like a diva and and not be producing and not be putting out um, an energy output that looks like you care. Mm-hmm and be kicking the ball away and wasting time and um you know not being accountable or not being uh somebody in the team that others can look up to because that's what you have been all season Mm -hmm. that's what's been put on your back and you have to react to that in a good way yeah so i pray you know um for that personally yeah i think i think that last season i probably would have opposed you more and i did whenever we had the the fight between maxi and santi um I think I was really hard on Maxi for the way that he was, you know, disciplining Santi on the field. Uh, coming from a leadership position, I didn't think it, you know, was necessarily an appropriate thing to do on the field. Um, especially from Maxi, you know, being the older guy, being being like the guy that honestly Santi at that time and even earlier this season was meant to f- literally fill your exact shoes, be the archetype that you are um, for this team. So I really didn't like that, but I don't know. There's something about this one where I, I just felt. Like, I, I came more around. I don't know, maybe I like Chanel more than I like Maxi, but I don't mind the behavior. But I guess where I, my disconnect is, is I just wish Chanel was the captain, especially yeah. if he's doing things like this. Uh, you know, I, I don't see James Sands necessarily getting fiery. Um, and I think, you know, when we talked to Rocha, uh, one of the biggest things that Rocha called out about James Sands potentially being the captain when we uh, proposed that question to him was Rocha was concerned that James Sands might not be at the point yet where he's being that fiery guy, that very right. vocal guy in the locker room, on the field, especially when you have these star players coming in that are between 19 to 21 years old. Um, and really, I mean, Talas is, you know, whether we look at Santi or Talas, uh, Talas, I think, is in very many ways a face of NYCFC Definitely. and a face of the league. Like the yeah. MLS 
like they he's a, he's him. a poster boy for the yeah. MLS. Straight up, MLS puts on for him, um, and you just can't you know you can't have him doing that. And if if I guess if James Hansen is going to do it, I like Chano doing it, um, but I just wish we were backing him in the way of him still having the armband. I still I still don't we still don't have clarity on what happened. Like it's so weird that that happened, and we all kind of were just like, okay, we accept this because we like Jimmy, right? But like it, it very much feels like. Vibes wise, like Chano is the guy still. Yeah, well, he's he's the eldest guy, um, and you're right. I think had he been wearing the armband, like not that it wouldn't be talked about, but it would have been the conversation would have been over by now. Well, it would have been a it would be in a completely different light that situation. Right. It's one thing when two players are fighting, and it's another thing when a captain is criticizing a player. Right. Completely exactly. two different. It kind of gives you that authority or the, the validity or whatever you want to say yep. um to to talk to a player in any way that you want and um yeah i just think that it had to happen in that moment because if you don't then it's like i think it would have been something bigger had he gone into the locker room and been like mm-hmm. okay don't ever kick the ball away like that don't ever waste time like that don't yeah. act like a diva like that then it's something where you know other players can potentially get into it and um, you know, have a real ugly situation in the locker room. Do you think that that was the extent of it, kicking the ball away? Yeah, I think it was kicking Just the that. ball away, um, whether that be wasting time or, you know, potentially putting yourself in risk of getting a yellow card for dissent. Mm-hmm. Um, just gener- generally looking bad. I think it really was, it came down to that. I don't think you could really, like if Chanel was yelling at him, like, hey, play better, I don't think that that's the place to do it. Um but yeah, I think when you're having that type of spiral on the field, you need somebody to to hold you down and be like, okay, you need to relax. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I've I've been that guy where <laughs> I'm losing my cool, and <laughs> it wouldn't have gone as far as it did if if uh, <laughs> somebody had, some leadership or whatever had kind of been like, hey, bro, like relax. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it's weird. I mean, I I kind of had the inclination that maybe there was like. A little something more there because it just seems like such a it seems like such a major outburst over something so small um especially coming off of what was a two-game winning streak at home where you know the fan base was on fire the team was on fire you know everything was good and perfect vibes we're in queens you know our, our favorite place to play now or everybody's favorite fa- place to play um and just for it to for the the switch to flip that quickly i don't know maybe maybe Chano felt more than anybody like he wanted to get one over on Sean being a center back part maybe he feels betrayed that Sean left and you know as as the minutes are slipping away because what was that like the 80th minute that happens I guess he I guess he just lost his cool well I mean there there's obviously been talks of um Tala's and maybe the Brazilians Mm -hmm. kind of isolating themselves and secluding themselves and kind of being like in somewhat of a click Mm -hmm. um and so maybe it was, you know, all seeing all of that all of the time and having that really add up um, to a moment where you see, you know, somebody further acting in just their own needs in, in that moment. Mm-hmm. And it just blows up to, you know, what you saw. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're I think even what you thought before, like could it could be that Chanel just might want more out of Tales on the field, um, you know, even in these games. Uh, the two city field ones that we just talked about, you know, Tyler's got his goal, obviously, but it, it was really a play that was derived from GP and he got a cleanup on it. And then in the game prior, it, you know, once again, it was the Santi and the GP show. Um, I think, you know, we talked about it a little bit personally, but I think he may be due or you think he may be due for a, a GPS benching to see, I mean, what you said about GP, what is he going to look like during training? Yeah, that's all about attitude. For, Locker for room. For is 100%. There's nobody that can say that that dude doesn't have the skill to be a dog in this league. Mm-hmm. It, it's just really been his his attitude and his body language and everything like that because everyone around you feeds off of you because you're one of the guys. If, if it's not Talas, it's Santi. So, you know... When Santi was not giving good body language, we were on him. Yep. Um, in the same way that we need Talis to just step up, um, make it look like you you care, make it look like you're putting an effort, so that when you know you go goalless for a game or two, 
we can back you like we back Tati because mm-hmm. we saw him chasing after every ball, every every play. He's chasing after every ball. He's trying to take people's ankles. Yep. If he can't get the ball, he's taking your ankles. Yeah. Like, those are the things that show us that you at least care and that you're not just trying to get a check and, you know, get a big signing somewhere else. And I think it's the, the type of thing on top of that, too, with, like, the coming back on defense. We, we mentioned it earlier. Obviously, that was a, a big part of the goal that was scored against us um, was that nobody – covered that runner you know going down the wing or you know O'Toole got beat but there wasn't anybody to help him um and I just think of like you know I think if Ronnie was still in charge there's like no way that Tales uh does not have the work ethic to be chasing that ball down and playing on defense like if you don't if you're a winger and you don't play yeah. defense for Ronnie you end up like Matrita and you like, end up in Tales really yeah you end up in Romania on loan and you're iced out and it's been four years, and nobody has any clue. What, you're still on the team. You're just not on the team. The loan status is unknown, and you're gone if you're not yep. back on defense. And um, I think we talked about how Cushing is pretty direct, and he knows exactly what he wants, what players he likes, and, and what he wants to do. Um, but I think this is going to have to be a moment where Talas Talas doesn't see the field next game unless it's in a sub appearance. Um, yeah. Very late, but. I don't know. We ship Tiago out, so I don't know who you play over him. That's the thing. Not, Mat- not Matsy. And against the Red Bulls. I mean, I, <laughs> not Matsy. Not Matsy. And we haven't even gotten I, I into I tried Matsy. to slip that in there. And we're at, <laughs> we're at 20, and we haven't touched on Matsy. Um, but I don't know. When I when I think more about it, like next week's the Derby, and I, I don't know how you sit uh, a DP or a Tales against them. But if you do, you're making it's an opportunity to make a bigger statement. I think he needs to come off the bench in the 45th minute. Literally a halftime sub. Um, Who starts over? Jason. Jason. And Cru- I mean, was. crucify me. I don't care. <laughs> Jason, um, his work ethic would do us really, really well against the Red Bulls. Um, and Talas needs to be sat. It, it Unless it comes out that he's... Like, I would need to see really hard evidence that his attitude and training has been... Literally the complete opposite of what it's been for the past mm-hmm. couple of weeks. Because um, even when we were winning, like, he wasn't smiling. He wasn't, like, happy. Yeah. He's out. I feel like, you know, we talked about it. We felt like he was still upset that he didn't score. Yep. In certain instances. Or he didn't have a good game in certain instances. Like, he's not even happy for a win. It's like, Talis needs to score or produce a good game to be happy, even if it's win or lose. Yeah. And I think so. even in a game like the Red Bulls, I mean, Jason might be a good shot. I mean, we we could potentially end up, if Jason is starting the first 45 minutes, the Red Bulls could be down a man or two by halftime. Yeah. With the way, I think... He's a magnet for, for fouls. I think against uh, FC Dallas, he was in for like 15 minutes, yeah. three fouls. And then uh, against Toronto, I think he had like two. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, especially in, you know, it's going to get... Uh, it's gonna get chippy. It's probably gonna get out of hand. It usually does. Um, <laughs> I but, think Alfredo should start that too. Yeah, I mean, I like, I love Alfredo and the, you know the passion that he brings. I think he really fights for us. Um, but I think you know probably the the biggest mistake of the night when it comes to to lineup changes um, and somebody that I definitely wouldn't like to see against the Red Bulls uh, would be Matty. I just I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on with Matsy. And maybe this is something that, I don't know, maybe this is something that Inter-Miami figured out. They obviously brought yeah. him in as a DP and things didn't work out. But I just, for me, I think the biggest part of it was I don't know how Matsy has three games off and through 20 to 25 minutes, he looks like he's sucking wind. Like, yeah. like there are no legs, there are no lungs available, and he's done. Like, I don't know, I don't know how it happens. I don't. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Cushing I'm, loves him too. We love him. And, and I've, does, I've fully joined. I don't know. You've pulled me into this Matty train, and I feel <sighs> like I don't know. I just the guy. He's the nicest guy in the world. Um, can't say enough about him off the field. Like he genuinely is such a nice guy, mm-hmm. and um, he's there for his teammates. When when he was suspended, he could have very easily just had the night off and you know not really cared. But he was there for the guys and in the locker room you know there for morale or whatever um it's just not the product on the field there's nothing that we can say that we haven't said for the past three four weeks it's like 
okay, th- there comes a time we need to produce something like it, now. Yeah. We need more than anything somebody to produce on offense right now. And if you're not showing that you could be that guy, just, you know, you can't take up a spot. Not when GP is. No, you're at all. Whatever you want to call your successor, or yeah. your, your your first string. I mean, you're you you cannot be on the field if GP can go. Um, and hopefully GP's good. I don't know. You know, obviously, very ambiguous injury reporting from from like NYCFC or City Football Group. Just lower body. He could have stubbed his toe. He could not have a leg anymore. We have no clue. Um, but hopefully he's good. I think a little bit of rumors about visa issues, knowing that we were traveling out of out of country to go to Canada. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything there, but we need, we simply, we need GP for the Red Bull game. Uh, And if we don't have him, it's going to be a tough game. Slow. It's going to be a tough game. So I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Matty. I think even in in the way he played, just constant like back passing was what I saw. from And then from everybody on the night, honestly, um, I think it, I don't know which commentator it was for Apple, but it was one of the. Uh, it only stands out because it was one of the first things I heard from commentators that like was pretty interesting and made me look at a game a way that I haven't before. Um, but they were saying like we were back passing so much that Toronto, who by the way they, in my opinion, they sat on it from the first minute and they just said Bernadeschi and Insigne are up there somewhere, <laughs> yeah. and that was Bob Bradley's game plan for the night. Um, other than that, they always had like seven to eight men behind the ball. Uh, But they said we were back passing so much that it kept giving Toronto the opportunity to reset their defense Mm -hmm. because they, they weren't necessarily pressuring us enough or I don't even think we were in Toronto's half more than like three times in the first half. So they always had everybody behind the ball and they kept being able to reset their positions. And, you know, because of that, we just weren't, we weren't able to exploit it um, with all that back passing. And that was everybody that was should know that was, Tiago, that was, every, I mean, yeah. literally everybody on the field. Nobody was looking forward, and I know that's your. That's like, my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> like that will, yeah, drive that, you crazy for watching it, a game more than uh, the people who don't uh, keep <laughs> keep roads clear. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean. Like if you're, yeah, if you're at a light and you're blocking the road, you're my public enemy number one. His windows going down, <laughs> and uh, he's yelling at you. Kind of like Tavon when he was yelling at Ben Teke stupid exactly yeah, yeah yeah so um yeah i don't know i i don't like back passing i hope i never see that type of play again it's so negative it's so uh bad to watch it just makes you it sucks the life out of you you know as a as a viewer as you know somebody who cares about the, the team but even as a neutral it's so terrible to watch um yeah i can't say enough about it i hate it yeah so i mean that'll I guess that'll probably sum it up. You know, I think you put it best. We have to talk about a lot of off-field stuff when there's not a lot of... On the field. The, the team isn't giving us right. a lot of on-field things to talk about. Um, so I guess... I don't know if I'm excited for the Derby, honestly. Like, it, it's typically a very exciting time of the year, but at the moment, I'm not very excited with the, the product that we have on the field, which is so weird. And it, maybe I'm being a little fair-weather because we just had two great city field experiences. Yeah. Um, but... I don't know. I, I hope being in New York, you know, New York, New Jersey. Being somewhat near home. Yeah, like they, they're probably they're staying at home, home for draw, the week, yeah, yeah. all week. You know. gonna, it's going to be like home game operations for the entire week minus the bus to Jersey Saturday morning. Uh, so hopefully that instills a little bit of of Queens vibes or Bronx vibes back in the team. Yeah. Um, well, if you're able to go too, I would say definitely go. Mm-hmm. Um you know, support the boys when they need it the most. I, I it, it's weird to be this somber off of just one loss, like you said. But um, there's something about. I think it, it was just something, uh, something about the loss that was, it just sucked the life out of you. With you know, whether that be Sean winning, um, keeping a clean sheet, the guys fighting, um, it seemed to mean more, and it, it feels like more um, for whatever reason. So, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But I hope we go and. Smack those Red Bulls in the mouth. Yeah. They are last in the league. Or last in the Eastern Conference. Right. Which I guess hasn't happened in a while, but it feels it feels like it's it happens more often than they're not league first or last. Yeah. So Well, I guess we're last <laughs> in that Not as last as them. <laughs> <laughs> in that universe. Um so that's that. That's that's ninety nine. Uh 
We obviously have big 100 coming up. I don't think we have anything special planned for it. I would think maybe maybe we'll save it for – we'll save the special episode for uh, the Philly home game. I think that to me – maybe we can do something – maybe we can do like a proper vlog type thing of us going to the game. I feel like we al- we always talk about it and like we obviously play you guys like – Little clips. The little clips we have the girlfriends record and stuff. But maybe <laughs> we should like properly try to put some some thought in uh, – in, and work ethic into it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what we come up with. Yeah, we're good at. Uh, it's well. It's I like, it's like the. Uh, I don't know. There's some self diagnosis thing you can do on TikTok where you know you find something that's wrong with you. Um, <laughs> but somebody was saying that you definitely have something if you know you're constantly planning big things and you never follow through on more than like <laughs> yeah. one of them. Yeah. At a time. So um, when we have a, we to be fair to us. No, there is something huge. We have maybe the the biggest thing that we've ever planned right. in Which, the works. Right. So Everyone up to something season. Shout out, you know, <laughs> shout out Pat McAfee. But uh, yep, can't hype it up too much because who knows? If, who knows? I mean, fall nothing apart might tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it could actually tomorrow. Literally, literally tomorrow. Tomorrow is um, a pretty big day. So, so, Dead Bulls on Saturday. Uh, yep. You know, turn the logo upside down. Turn the stadium upside down. Um, I wish it was like a horn down thing for Red Bulls. That would be sick. Yeah. We should come up with something like that. Yeah, um, yeah we're waffling. Episode 99. Um, you can find us anywhere that you listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. Post 90 podcast. Um, on Twitter, Post 90 pod. Everywhere. Instagram, Everywhere. TikTok. TikTok. YouTube has ads now. Uh, and we're, I, I don't know if we hit 400 on Twitter or or not. But if not, we're like a follower or two away. And then obviously only a handful away on YouTube too. So obviously it always helps to like and comment and sub and, you know, tell that algorithm to, to boost the boys because it helps out. So definitely see you guys after Red Bulls. Peace.